that the chorus of this song is, is at the bottom of uh, the page three, which is the second page inside here. It says, your love is peace to the broken, faith for the widow, hope for the orphan, strength for the weak. Your love is the anthem of nations, rings out through the ages, and you're always enough for me. I think it's important for us to say, to take a look at what this is saying, and maybe what it's not saying. Because I think there's probably everybody in this room, that everybody says, hey, is Jesus enough for you? You go, absolutely. And then you start thinking about what is it you're anxious about? What are the things you fear? What are the things that sadden you? What are the things that you wish you had? What are the, what are the things that you wish you didn't have that you have? And who are the people that you miss? And all those things that can so easily creep in and create something that somehow doesn't make Christ enough. You know what I'm saying? And so it draws me to the psalm. And I, should, I know you've, you've heard it before because it kind of started with the whole uh, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul. And I love how the psalms make us talk to ourselves. Most of the world thinks you're crazy, but <laughs> the Bible says, no, do it. Talk to your soul. In Psalm 42, later after it, uh, there's some really good self-talk going on here. He says, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. And when you think of it, I think the next line is something about how wonderful God is. His song to God. But he goes on to say what his song is. I say to God, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Etc. 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 Have you been there? You've been there with me? Because I've been there. <laughs> right? You want to lay in your bed at night and think of all the great things you could say to God and talk about, and yet the psalmist is really honest about saying, he's not always there. But then what does he have to do? Here's the part you already know. He has to say to himself, why are you down past, oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. What this song, Always Enough, is not going to say is that just because you have things on your mind doesn't mean Christ isn't enough. He will always be enough for you. Sometimes he, sometimes I think God allows us to lose things before we really see that he can be enough. That's a huge, huge part of, of not only being humbled, but also recognizing that what we, anything you would ever pray for, you already have in Christ. Think of it in those terms. Anything you would ever want to pray for, you already have in, in Christ. And I'm not talking about, I wish I had a brownie right now. You know what I'm saying? What I am saying is, I wish I had that satisfaction that really only Christ can give me. I wish I could do this, or I really miss so and so. And Christ says, "You have me." That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And I think that's captured in Psalm 63. Oh God, it says, "You are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water." You will find out that this anthem comes from basically Psalm 63. So I've looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and your glory. And I love the fact that the, the psalmist recognizes sometimes it's just getting into that place of worship where all of a sudden our minds begin to be clarified as to what we should be looking at. Just got back from seeing a whole lot of, of cathedrals and churches in England. And what's amazing to me, and, and Westminster Abbey probably the, the most dramatic, is that they're, they're in essence graveyards, but more importantly what you're looking at when you go in there is the floor, because everybody's buried there. Now you'll see people um, uh, that you just, you've heard of in history, there's a whole issue, a whole area of, of poets and writers that are there, you see kings and queens and the whole thing. But what struck me a lot is that everybody's looking down at the ground, at the floor. Who am I walking on right now? <laughs> and yet, if you just looked up, the magnificence of buildings.
buildings that were built centuries and centuries ago and they're going, how in the world? And God says, well, it's me. And if you look up, there's a whole different view of those places. And that's what this really is saying. Because you can, if you're looking down, you're finding all the dry and the weird land. If you're looking up, you're finding where God is. So I've looked upon you in the sanctuary, the psalmist says, and when he does, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. And he goes on to say, my soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. As if, again, it's more the issue of contentment that we're after here. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you on my bed and I meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Christ is enough. God is always enough. But that doesn't mean you're gonna, not going to have those times where, you're, where God allows things in your life. If the, the hope that I can give to you tonight is go look down, look up. All right? Because that's what you have already in Christ. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. In the dry and weary land, Lord, you are the rain. That's what the psalmist said. In a sea of shattered ones, that's you and me. I hope you know how shattered you are. I can share you a lot of comfort <laughs> Your love comes rushing in. And then it goes back. Now, those of you who don't read music, you'll see at the top of page three, there's a one up there with a big long line. That means the first time you're going to sing those. The second time, we, we're going because we're going to go back to the second verse, which is, Behold the world within your hands. And then when we come to it the second time, the number two lot is in the middle of page three, and that's where we're going to go. The second verse says, Behold the world within your hands, and see, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you hold the world within your hands and see each tear that falls. Through every fire, there's the second. In every storm, you're always enough, always enough. And then it goes on to say, as I said before, your love is peace to the broken. Why? Because we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith for the widow. Right? There's enduring faith. There are people in this room that can tell you how difficult it is to say goodbye to the person that they were married to, right? But they also have the hope of faith that's there. And it goes on to say hope for the orphan. You belong. You belong. This is your family. This is your family. You know? Strength for the weak. Your love is the anthem of nations, rings out through the ages, and you're always enough. And it'll go on, just like the song said, in the watches of the night, Lord, you are my song. Hope is in the morning light, your love shines like the dawn. That's going to be the tenors and basses singing that lightly. And then the ladies join us in the middle of page six. You keep my heart in perfect peace. My life is in your hands. When confusion hides my way, it happens a lot, you're always enough. You're always enough. And then it says that chorus again. And then in the midst of this, there's the response. There's a response you have to just let your song out. And that happens at the bottom of page 8. I rejoice, and the men sing, for my Savior reigns. I rejoice, for he lives in me. God on high, he has set me free, and worthy is the Lord. Now when we get to the end of this piece, we're going to do a repeat of that, because I think it needs one more repeat. I just felt it that way. Those of you who got the learning track on this, you recognize that the you ran out of music before you ran out of notes. So, with that in mind, if you, if you go to page 11, and you find measure 69, that's the middle staff there, we're going to go back to that place. Uh, actually, we're using the pickup at the top of 11, the last three notes, I rejoice. So, for the first time through, we're going to go all the way through page 11, when you get to the top of page 12, which is the last page, you're going to sing, Worthy is the Lord, and then you're going to go back to the page 11 and again sing, I rejoice for my Savior reigns, I rejoice for He lives in me. And then we'll just sing straight through to the end. All right, the thing I like about this piece um, is that sense of minor that you're going to hear in this, which kind of helps to picture, you know what I mean, things between major and minor? Here's a major chord. 
that minor. Yeah. Happy? Sad. Sad minor. You get the idea. So a lot of this has a very kind of modal sad tone.